OpenAI Codex, a massive deep learning model with over 12 billion parameters trained on code from 54 million public GitHub repositories with the sole purpose of taking our jobs, or I mean, helping us to do our jobs. In a recent video, I showed it tearing through leak code questions with ease. Many of you were unimpressed and pointed out that technical interview questions aren't always representative of real world programming. So today's video, I wanna test this model against a more realistic DevOps task, writing infrastructure as code configurations. I'll be using the OpenAI Codex model to tackle increasingly complex challenges using Pulumi. Thanks to Pulumi for sponsoring this video. Pulumi is an infrastructure as code tool which allows you to define and manage all of your cloud infrastructure using your favorite programming languages such as C-sharp, Python, TypeScript, and Go. Because we can write our Pulumi configuration in a general purpose language, I'm hoping that Codex will be able to tap into its understanding of these languages to generate usable outputs. I'll be using Google Cloud Platform for these examples, so I set up my credentials and then use the Pulumi command line pool to initialize my project. Because I'm using JavaScript, the setup's an NPM environment with the necessary packages pre-installed. To get things started, I wanted to do what is essentially a hello world for infrastructure as code by creating a Google Cloud storage bucket. The way the model works is I feed it an instruction and then it outputs some code. I use the prompt, create a Google Cloud storage bucket named Pulumi Codex Demo using Pulumi. And here's the result. Generally, it looks pretty good. There is one issue here, and that's that this Pulumi.get project call corresponds to the name of my Pulumi project, not the GCP project. I can fix that by instead setting the project variable equal to gcp.project, which I configured when setting things up. The model also chose to use var instead of const to declare the variables, which is an outdated style, and made a few configuration assumptions for us, such as setting the region to US Central 1 and choosing the standard storage class. That being said, these are reasonable default choices since I didn't provide any more info about that in my prompt. After making my disgust tweak, I'm able to run the pulumi up command to create my storage bucket. Overall, I'd call this a success. Let's take it up a notch and try to create a Google Kubernetes Engine cluster. I use the prompt create a GKE cluster named pulumi codex test cluster with pulumi. Here's the resulting code. Again, at first glance, it looks pretty good. It did make the same project mistake as last time, so we'll need to swap that out. But when we go to use the config, there's a couple more issues we'll run into. First, it's using a super old Kubernetes version that's no longer supported. We'll need to update this from 1.12 to 1.19. Second, the GKE resource requires setting a zone either in the resource or at the provider level. So I'll need to run Pulumi config set GCP zone and then set it to the zone I want to deploy into. With these modifications, the cluster can now be created, but there's a few more things to note. Once again, it used var instead of const, it's also importing the Kubernetes module even though it's not being used yet. Finally, it's making some assumptions about configurations that we'll want to take a closer look at. For example, this preemptible configuration for the node pool means that we would need to design our application to be robust against unexpected terminations. It's also selecting a set of OAuth scopes which determine the access that the cluster will have to the broader GCP project. So you'd want to assess if these are the appropriate choices for your security needs. After making my explained tweaks, I was able to spawn the cluster with this config. Overall, the model output was pretty close to being right. I'll rule it a partial success. Continuing on with the Kubernetes example, let's see if we can get the model to deploy something into our cluster. First, we'll need to set up the credentials. I gave it the prompt, export the cube config for that cluster. I then wanted to deploy a simple Nginx deployment with an external load balancer, so I prompted with, create a Kubernetes Nginx deployment and external load balancer service. Again, just looking at the config, it seems pretty reasonable. However, there's a number of changes that we need to make in order to actually use it. First, GKE has some nuances to how it handles authentication, which requires you to craft the cube config file in a particular way. I found a template within the Pulumi documentation and added it in. I then also specified some depends on and provider resource configuration so that Pulumi is able to properly sequence the creation of these things. Overall, I was pretty impressed with the fact that the model was able to generate this config, and the main issue is the tricky GKE specific configuration. After making that change, I was able to deploy the application and then access it via my external IP address of the load balancer in a browser, 
So now we have a working example of deploying both the cluster and an application. Once again, I'm gonna rule it just a partial success because of all those modifications we had to make. So far, we've been creating new configurations from scratch, and I haven't been making the code very modular or reusable. For the final challenge, I wanna focus on improving the code reusability, specifically using the concept of Pulumi component resources. I prompted the model with, create a Pulumi component resource to create multiple Kubernetes engine projects in different environments. The model output this. This isn't really quite right. Rather than creating an instance of that component resource class, what we actually need to do is extend the class. Let me try being more specific with the prompt. I told it to extend the Pulumi.component resource to create a Google Kubernetes engine component that creates clusters in different environments. I would then want to use that component to create a cluster, so I prompted with create a cluster using that cluster class. This is closer to what we want. Here's the configuration we're working with. This time, it has a new mistake in the project field. It's been hard-coded to an erroneous value, so I'll need to swap that out to our gcp.project. The way that it's creating the cluster is also slightly off. Rather than reference it with this path, we would want to import the Pulumi GCP provider like we did before. It also has conflicting version information. 1.15.7 for the nodes does not align with the version specified as latest for the control plane. In order to fix this, we can just remove the node version and let them follow along with the control plane. Also, the fact that it's trying to register the cube config as an output is nice because then we would be able to use it in other resources. But again, we would need to use the GKE specific method for generating a valid config. There's a few more minor tweaks I would make if I was gonna actually use this component. I would move the imports outside of our class definition, probably put the component in another file entirely, and maybe expose a few more of the configuration options to make it more configurable. For example, my development cluster, I might want only a few nodes, but in my production cluster, I might want many more. By being very specific about the desired output, I was able to generate a reusable module that sort of works. Again, I'll score this a partial success, but barely. Where does this leave us? With a bit of help, the latest and greatest code writing AI in existence was able to successfully use Pulumi to create a storage bucket, create a Google Kubernetes engine cluster, and then deploy an application into that cluster. I found that the smaller and more specific the prompt I gave it, the more likely the model was to produce the desired output. That being said, once we moved to more nuanced configurations and or trying to write reusable modules, it started to struggle. Also, this approach of carefully crafting specific instructions with the hope of getting an opaque machine learning model to output the exact code you want is much less efficient than simply reading the Pulumi documentation and using the tool directly. Also, it requires you to understand the output in order to assess if it's doing what you want it to. As you can see, we're quite far from an AI being able to write and manage our infrastructure's code configurations, which means that it's still a critical skill for those of us working in DevOps and cloud infrastructure. If you want to get started with trying out Pulumi yourself, I would recommend a great video from one of my favorite DevOps creators, Tech World with Nana, over here. That's it for today, and remember, just keep building.